and like to make a comment? Yeah, uh, I might just, can I, I'll go ahead. Um, I'd like to make a comment. Um, I'm very happy about the outcome of this meeting that the bond attorney said that we can go uh, forward with that alternative. So I'm very happy. I do have a question for Kyle, and I just want clarification. You previously did state, and I want to get it on record, that the line from the tank was not budgeted in by JUB when we passed bond three, and the cost of that line is 347000 Is that a correct statement? So from, and let me just back up. So that was a project that was identified by the district at our last meeting as a project they would like to be incorporated with the upcoming improvement projects. So I don't know how that came into fruition in the prior facility plan, but that project is now incorporated and budgeted for both alternative F and alternative so I, I, I guess I can't speak on the behalf of what the prior engineer did or how that came into fruition, but I think the good news is is that we are showing this project being budgeted because the district requested this, and it's a huge project that they're concerned with leaking associated with it, and now it is currently budgeted for both of these projects. So we are comparing apples to apples. Yes, but, but when we voted, go back to the day we voted on Bond 3, was it budgeted for the transmission line leaving the tank? Was it budgeted when we voted? I will pull up the facility plan and just confirm, but my, from what I recall, I do not remember it being shown in on the overall project cost. I'm just pulling it up right now. Right. I recall you saying it was not budgeted in that line. Yes. And so my then my question would be for Katie. Um, how did we vote on a bond to rehab a tank and it wasn't budgeted in for the line from the tank? And these are the 1940-year tank lines, the oldest lines, the lines we talked for years about having probably where the leak is, but yet we voted for a $3.4 million bond that did not include the line from the tank. And my analogy, Katie, is it's like going to buy a bicycle and leaving the shop without the wheel. Um, can you talk to how that happened? But that's not really DEQ's job. DEQ's job is not to be the engineer. And at the same time, you know, the, the board's changed over quite a bit. And there's been a lot of different things going on. So I don't want to speak on behalf of Katie, but her, her job, she's got a million other clients like Baby Water and Sewer District, and she's providing kind of the oversight and making sure that it meets the minimum requirements um, established by ADAPA. So, you know, it, that's by no means her responsibility to make sure that Baby is doing, you know, X, Y, Z to satisfy a leaky pipe, right? Yeah, but Kyle, you know, seriously, you're doing great. This is not nothing to do with you. This conversation, um, it's the fact that you guys are experts. Katie's an expert. You're an expert. JUB was an expert. They had a ninety thousand dollar facility plan, forty five thousand paid by Bayou Warden Sewer, forty five by DEQ. Wouldn't somebody? Pay attention to say, wow, you're going for a bond, but it's missing the line from the tank. And even if we did the West End, even if we were going with the West End, we still have to pay for the line leaving the tank that we're rehabbing. So nobody's mentioned that no matter what, you were going to pay that money extra for that line. Either way you went, on either route. So something something to consider, too, is when we weigh costs and kind of uh, cons of a project, maybe at the time when the board elected to proceed with this, is they didn't foresee the value at this time to re replace that line because the leaking water wasn't necessarily causing low pressures or fire flow. But Kyle, we, okay. we voted to rehab the tank. If you're rehabbing the tank, it only makes sense that you're going to have the line leave the tank. <laughs> How are you... Not seeing that. The line has to leave the tank. Like the bicycle so, has to have the wheel. Yeah. I and don't know how working. that oversight occurred. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I, I can wager a guess.
but I don't know exactly how that oversight occurred. I do know that in my technical review of the components of the facility plan, I looked at the technical contents in the body of the plan. I did not fine tooth comb those budgets that were put in the back. And I do know that there were multiple iterations requested by the previous board. Right. Back to back. And so I have a, that's where I'm going to wager a guess is that that's where it slipped through the cracks. It was not, there was no ill will, no intention to do that. It slipped because there were so many iterations back to back happening that were requested with this last minute alternative E that came in when, when bonds would not pass with a new tank as a possibility. Right. And I think that's where it slipped. Um, yeah. It has always been my understanding that it was the intent of the district, this board yeah. and the previous board, to replace that line. I yeah. don't know how it slipped the budget. I agree. So, I always thought that we were replacing it. Um, it well, it's I actually a called out in... Katie? It, it is mm -hmm. actually called out in the project description. That's in the ballot. Yeah. So it was in there. No, no. Um, I agree with Katie. There were multiple versions um, of projects. Even on the first 2018, what I brought to the board meeting uh, for consideration is the board at that time asked me to bring three different election resolutions. Mm, so right. the project was constantly being adjusted. That's really a question for the prior board. Yeah, well, it actually, it was pretty obvious because they put on the ballot both times a new tank, and so they didn't need that. It's and still so, right. That that's how it sucked through the cracks, and then suddenly called in the engineer again. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to rehab, and so you're right. There was just a lot going on, and well, and I, yeah. it wasn't needed. Right. But it was an oversight, it was a slip, and I'm just pointing out that that's what experts are there to do, um, is to find those errors, and that that's what happened. So my other question for Katie is, is it true that there are millions of dollars more in repairs to our water system that need to be done? Um, I'm just asking because you mentioned after the facility plan hearing, I was there at the attended the meeting where you said the district still had five million dollars more they needed to do. Um, so can you explain that? I, I don't know a specific dollar amount. Um, I know that spending this money does not end. This is my standard statement is spending this money to fix these pieces of the water system does not end the board or the district's responsibility to continue to make improvements over time to ensure that the water system continues to serve safe and reliable water and does not get to this dilapidated state again. Right. I don't have a dollar amount for that, though. Right. Well, the, at the facility hearing that um, that evening, you did say, you stated that we need to spend $5 million more. I'm, I'm sure Jesse recalls that statement. Um, well, what Katie was referring to is according to our sanitary survey where things were not um, significant deficiencies. We're paying attention to just the significant deficiencies, deficiencies. but um, as our one of the DEQ workers, um, Suzanne, I believe, did our sanitary survey, and she came out and she identified that there are a number of other things in the system that ideally for the system to run at optimal levels need to be um, done in the future. Um, I don't remember the dollar amount offhand. I know that the sanitary survey is on our website, so you can refer to that um, for any specific amounts. But, yeah, there are going to be things in the future that the system does need to repair, and we need to know that just like Katie's saying, just because we get these things done for this amount, there will be things in the future. Okay. And, and if I did say a number, it was likely off of a slide that had been presented by the engineer and would be... Um, in that facility plan in general as, you know, we have distribution. If we were to replace the entire distribution, this is what it would cost. Right. And I, yes, eventually over time, that entire distribution system will need to be replaced as pipes wear out. Yeah. yeah. I, okay, I'm done. I have no more questions. Thank you, Allie, for asking if I had questions. Sure. Are, are, are there other there are there members of the public on that would like to comment? Yes, I would. One thing that is wonderful is 
when the board is able to finish doing the work so that we can adjust the billing and get more people that are using the system paying rates, it will be a considerable addition to our to the income. No step yeah. And 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 that's that's Faye Bear on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so that's wonderful. That's a big cushion that may come in very handy as soon as this can be um, yep. done. Yeah, and yeah, I don't think Kyle's aware of that fact, of that. Um, when he says raising rates for the customers, I don't think he's aware that there's an issue going on that uh, the district needs to, um, is losing lots of money. I don't think Kyle knows about that. Yeah. Which, which I'm hopeful that when we get, um, Colleen's working so hard on it, when we get the ER and the, um, that, the that water. yeah, that we'll uh, be able to make the rates all um, equitable. Yeah. Everybody's paying the same thing for the same service. Well, we have to get there. When you get there, then, then you can raise my rights. Otherwise, it would not be palatable for me. <laughs> Our most people. Yeah. Can yes. I just make a really quick comment? I just want to, you know, uh, um, say the board is doing a really good job. These are difficult conversations to have. They're, it's not straightforward. This is not something you just read in the manual and you understand it. Um, these questions are great. And Katie and Laura, um, everyone's on the phone. You guys really help clear this up. And you guys are asking the right questions. You guys are planning, you know, you're going through the right process, even though it seems a little painful. But I mean, the comment is you've got to be able to start slow in order to run later. And yeah. I think that you guys are getting your ducks in a row, and it's painful because you know you kind of you'd like to get going on this. But I think you're, you're taking the right steps. So I, I think that um, that's really crucial. And you know, we're not getting to step C and going, oh shoot, we didn't get this figured out at step A. So um, I just wanted to say that. Well, thank you, Bob, and, I, and, and we really do appreciate Laura and Katie. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. This has been so helpful. It has. It Very really helpful. has taken a weight off our shoulders as far as knowing if we're moving forward in the right direction. So we really appreciate your input. What? Glad to help. Does anyone else would like to make a comment? There's a few other people. Okay. Laid the foundation. Oh, and Calvin, right. Ted, do you, are, are we pretty much done? Or so. yep. No, I just think we got to get a meeting going pretty soon. Um, so yeah, we have a meeting with Kyle. So. <laughs> yeah, right. I think we need to get the public hearing going, and then we well, can hearing, yes. start working on our timelines. And action item two. Yes. We, we need to do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, you want me to start into that, Allie, and give a quick summary of that? That'd be great. I'm just, okay. I'm 